it going, everybody? Welcome back to Nerd Locker, a place for inner nerd. My name is Brandon. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Ryan. And this is episode 28. All right. Uh, I'm not Ryan. You guys didn't, I even like did the whole oh. get up like he does and well, it's an April Fool's joke. Oh, oh it's oh. today. Oh, hey, guess what? April Fool's. Uh, uh, you were Ryan. Tell the difference, come that's, on. Uh, that's cruel. And there goes half of our viewers. So, one of the producers of the X-Men movies and uh, X-Men Wolverine Origins announced that there will be a Deadpool movie. But, it's gonna be a total reboot, possibly gonna be making fun of the Deadpool you saw in Wolverine Origins, which, awesome. I mean, come on, hard not Who to wouldn't make fun, make fun of, of him? That. Yep. And uh, Ryan Reynolds is still very much detached, and he's ooh, working ooh, ooh. with the writers. Uh, I also guess you're gonna get full costume Deadpool, normal Deadpool, and then cancer-ridden, scarred, Deadpool. And that's so. what we all want to see. That's my favorite kind of Deadpool. And yeah. it's going to be a hard R. So Ooh. all those crazy, dirty jokes mm -hmm. and sh shooting people. This and is a being lot awesome. of good news yeah. coming out. Yeah, first off, Finally. Ryan Reynolds actually being kind of kind of confirmed that he's still attached. So I mean, that's a big deal. That's yeah. really cool. It's I been mean, up in the air for a while. So I just love like after Wolverine Origins, everyone saw it and they're like, they're going to do a Deadpool movie with that. That's terrible. So. A lot of good news coming from an X Men movie for the yeah, first for the time, first time in, in forever, yep, like years. So I'm I'm down. Hard just, R, Deadpool movie. Good. I'm excited. I really want to see the opening be like him open his mouth, something dumb from the last one. I hope I hope you like see it. I just hope they reference it and he's just like. It no, was all a dream. No. Something dumb like that. Cyclops powers now. <laughs> It was one of his subconsciousnesses. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be perfect. Do that, like the three level of. Uh... Yeah, yeah, they have to. They I have mean, to totally. that's that's Deadpool. for a really funny movie, I think they would they would think that that's the best idea. That's quintessential Deadpool right there. So well, nothing but good news, and I am very excited. finally excited. Thank you. All right, and now some bad news in the X Men movie franchise. There's always I bad news. You can't, news. you can't get that much good news without a little. There's yeah, always a catch. There's, There's always, always a catch. catch. Some of the producers presented to Fox the idea of X4, followed by an X5 that all take place after X3. And apparently, Fox is thrilled. They need to take these rights away from Fox. Like, let it die, for one. Wasn't it called The Last Stand for two? And no one wants to see another one of these horrible movies. They are full of bad ideas. <laughs> They're just terrible. Full of bad ideas. Terrible. It's just like, you know, Cyclops is dead. Dead. <laughs> Jean Grey is dead. dead. Angel kind of didn't do anything. Which was even and he more got disappointing. Wolverine, but now he's doing his own movies. He's so in it's Australia. Like, what do you? And Professor X is in a. Oh, Professor X is dead, isn't? No, because he was in that body. He's but that, yeah, now like... he's gonna be like a giant hairy dude with a beard. I remember yeah, that. you'll only know that if you stayed after the credits for the third but film. No, I think I was so angry. I was like, no, I'm leaving. I will YouTube it. So there's that on the X Men news. Sorry to give you that Deadpool, and then the. I think the Deadpool's still uh, kind I'm of still sad. Deadpool. There's still yeah. hope there. <laughs> Hopefully that like brings up everybody's spirits enough that you don't care about X4 and 5. In movie news, I don't think any of us got enough footage from the first trailer uh, during Super Bowl no. for Green Lantern. No. Um, unfortunately, the special effects team is taking extra long on the post stuff, so uh, we're going to have to wait even longer. Um, I heard that uh, they're gonna actually going to show some footage at CinemaCon here <laughs> in Las Vegas. So. I have to say, this is either gonna like really help out the movie or really make the movie terrible. I like, think it's gonna help. extra time. Yeah. Because I have to say, like the effects I thought were cool, like the giant fist, like I like that mm -hmm. they're actually When I doing, saw Oa, I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, like projections and stuff as opposed to just like the first two seasons of Justice League Unlimited where it's just laser beams and <laughs> bubbles. Yeah. But uh, I'm really hoping this pans out well because I was not happy with the first trailer I saw. Like. Just story wise, everything looked a little cheesy, so I'm hoping that they kind of take this extra time and really do a good job. I'm still it. sticking with the fact that, like, young Hal Jordan, pre parallax on stuff, is sort of campy and sort of cheesy, and he has little quips and he's really witty like that, so that doesn't really scare me. What really scares me was, like, his, with his suit, so I'm, I am really stoked yeah. for the special effects scene to be taking longer, just because maybe that'll be an improvement. Like, when I saw Abin Sur, I was like, nah. Not happening, but oh, it looks really cool. Other stuff looks really cool. There's Kilowog, which I'm so stoked to see on the big screen. So, my take on the whole thing is they can take as long as they want because I want this to be exactly. absolutely yeah. perfect. Like, no point. Take, and you have to push it back. Another push year. It back. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm I feel like I'm the only one that's saying this, but 
I think that the trailer looked good. I, I thought do. that it looked great. I thought it looked funny. Of all the lines that Blake Lively has in that movie, that's the one they picked out. Yeah, the that's true. One, and it's like this awkward angle where it's like down on her, but she's looking like this, and it's like, hell, hell, you have to not embarrass me today. We have to do good. That's the one thing I'm not excited about for Green Lantern. Uh, Blake Lively, I don't think she's really invested in the character. You uh, know, did you see the town? I did. Yeah. She was yeah. in the town. And half the movie, I didn't realize it was her. All of a sudden, I was like, holy crap. She's a blonde. Yeah. She's really good. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm I just, in all the interviews that I've seen, she does. it doesn't seem like she's showing enough interest kinda in the, just in the like role. Kind of just like, oh, it's a comic book movie. I'm going to get a big old paycheck. So, I'm kind of calling it now that she might be replaced for the second movie or third movie. Oh. So, I'm just making that call now. I, I want to be right, right now, <laughs> so that later. You My only it. issue with Blake Lively is the fact that Carol Ferris has black hair. Almost eh. always. Eh. And that's the only thing I have. Yeah. That's true. She, she, she does. Well, I don't know. You heard it first. Bobby says she's getting her place. So. Yep. <laughs> we'll it's going to happen. With a dark haired woman. I'm super stoked for this. Uh, they're making a movie of the comic called The Boys. Adam McKay from Anchorman met with Russell Crowe to play one of the main characters, Billy Butcher. This is one of the coolest comics I have ever read, and I freaking love it. You have no idea. This sounds completely brilliant like so happy right now i think russell crowe is an awesome choice for that role if they do a hard r movie of this it could be per and you have to do a hard r or if like an nc-17 it just has to you, be bad you can't cut any corners Dude, not this. at all there's and, no uh, way you can make it clean at all either one corner you definitely can't cut is they got to get simon pegg for this have to they get drew simon, simon pegg peg into this comic without telling him uh, unofficially yeah without his knowledge but he's but it's totally simon down with it and he yeah. loves it too so if for those of you that don't uh, that have never read the boys you need to it's about a uh, government group that kind of keeps superheroes in check when they're too wild out of control just crazy out of control we'll yeah. use the word because there's some crazy crap that goes on in this book but. yeah the team is assembled of people that have all been felt the hurt yeah, been of affected superheroes, by you know? like really bad superheroes. And i'm going to tell you the character that's drawn as simon pegg Gets it bad. That's the. Oh man. I remember reading this and just going, holy crap. Like, and it just gets better every time I read it, too. So, man, I hope this this goes through. I think it will. Uh, they're just going to really need an R rating. Oh, really there's some, you can't even, you can't make the movie without The movie it. is not worth seeing if it's not R rated people. Okay. All right. Movie coming out this weekend that I have been waiting for since I saw it. Finally. Moon. Source Code, it's the new Duncan Jones film. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Duncan Jones is David Bowie's son. If you haven't seen Moon, do yourself a favor and go see Moon. Oh, yeah. It is on Netflix. And I have to say, like this, I'm not just excited for it because I finally got a poster for Mondo. Thanks, Jim. Uh, by Ollie Moss. I didn't get the Moon one, so I'm gonna have to, if anybody out there has it and doesn't want to charge me $300 for it. But I anyways, think that's reasonable, actually. <laughs> that's a really nice poster. It's so cool. But I'm really stoked on Source Code. Oh, I man. loved what he did with Moon, and I just, I like his whole angle with the way he wrote it. So this looks so good. I'll let you know next week what when I thought we of see it. it. And it's got Jake Gyllenhaal. I so, love Jake Gyllenhaal. So, so even if you don't get the story, at least there's something to look at, ladies. Hi, Candy. And, and men. My pick of the week is going to be Battlestar Galactica Season 1. I just started it. This is my adventures into new realms of nerddom. Uh, I knew that I know a lot of people that like the show, and I since I just kind of got started on season five of Doctor Who, I really decided I needed to go into space a little bit more. Battlestar Galactica is really good, and you get to see a little bit of a Terminator type action in a show. It's been going for four or five long seasons, so definitely check it out. Battlestar Galactica. Hey, Internet. Jazz here with my pick of the week. It is this super sweet magnet that I bought because I like to buy things. It's amazing. It's got all my favorite girl superheroes in it, and it's all super old, like 90s art. Equally as awesome. You can find one, go pick it up. What's up guys, it's Brandon here. Nerds, I'm letting you down this week with my pick, but it's the only thing that keeps me happy until October. It's baseball season, and it starts this week. Go Yankees. All right guys, that's gonna be it for episode 28, but be sure to go to nerdlocker.com, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Brandon. I'm Jasmine. And I'm not Ryan. <laughs> Have a geeky week. Did I do that? Have a nerdy week. Nerd Locker!